It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Welcome to 2K Sports, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson, sitting alongside the big diesel, Shaquille O'Neal, and the prop plane, Kenny Smith. Tonight, we'll be watching the Utah Jazz playing against the Mavericks in Dallas. Well, for the Mavericks, thus far, about the same number of wins as last season. Nonetheless, every game provides a chance for them to get better. And Rick Carlisle, one of the longest tenured coaches in the NBA, led the Mavs to the title in 2011. Kenny, he always seems to get the most out of his players. I was just saying this yesterday. What? He's approaching godfather status in Dallas. I just said that yesterday to someone. He holds a franchise record for coaching victories, and this is why he's one of the best in the league. You know, without question, one of the elite coaches in the NBA. The Mavs uh, did a great job. Mark Cuban, they extended his contract early. Guess what? He's not going anywhere. No, mm. he's not. Good dude, too. Time now for tip-off. We get it to Kevin Harlan. And he's not going anywhere, either. Thanks for joining us here on 2K Sports for NBA Basketball. This is Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. DA will join us tonight on the sideline. So for the Mavericks, their last game, a loss to Chicago. And they couldn't get stops when they needed to. The opposition just too comfortable shooting the basketball. Well, you know what, Greg? When the defense is that lax, come on now. They honestly deserve to lose. You can't let a team get into that kind of a group. Now it's ended out to David Aldridge standing by from the sidelines. David? Thanks very much. Well, Quinn Snyder is the coach here in Utah, and he said, as a coaching staff, we show the players we have confidence in them. And then we're unbelievably demanding. But it has to be mixed with patience. And that, over time, pays off. Kevin? Teaching and motivating. He's done a nice job, DA. Thanks. And early in the season, many coaches, Clark, still experimenting with rotations. Who plays when and where? And how long has it been in your experience to have that established on a team? Well, it varies from team to team. There are a number of factors. One, the coach, has he been there a while? Does he have an established style of play and system? Um, two, what's your roster like? Um, how healthy are you? What's the mix and makeup of your team? Um, so it could vary. But typically, you'd like to have it not prolong itself into the regular season. You hope that the few weeks of training camp and then by the time you get a month of the season under your belt that you're pretty anchored into who you are and how you're going to try to play. Good outline. The starters for the Utah Jazz. Rubio teams up with Mitchell in the backcourt. Ingles outside with favors of power forward. And it's Gobert in at the five. Now Rubio. Harrison Barnes missing on the three. And the shot is good. Dropping in off the front of the rim. Mitchell's got the first points up on the board tonight here for Utah. Doncic with it. He kicks it to Smith. Over Ingle. The shot's good from Smith. Smith very crafty at finding ways to get room for that mid-range shot. He's got an awesome in-between game. Now, here's Rubio. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Grizzlies in Memphis. And he also looked to attack at the defensive end of the floor. Three steals in that game. Mitchell against Smith. Down to five on the shot clock. And again, Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell's got his second basket. Yeah, good awareness there. He sees an opening and doesn't hesitate. Boy, it's a thing of beauty watching him attack the defense like that. I mean, they wanted no part of him on that layup. Good work there as it goes. Doncic has got his first bucket of the night. And certainly not lacking in confidence. When Doncic gets these inside looks, he just jumps all over. Here's Mitchell. An easy two points on the layup. Mitchell's got six. Off to a nice start here. They've hit all three from the field. For Dallas, they've gone two or three here to start out the game. Smith outside. Pass to Barnes. Oh, 
Ingles with the rebound. Well, he mistimed it just a scope. Don't think the defense really had an impact. I think he just flat out missed it. Now here's Favors. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Memphis. Yeah, but his shot blocking was a factor as well. Three on the game. Just a major presence on the D. Here's Mitchell. Let's the three fly. Second chance shot. Misses the layup. Boy, incredible effort on defense. Refusing to give him an uncontested layup. Nothing easy. Here's Smith. Great pass to set up the lay-in. Yeah, Smith makes you pay when he gets inside. Despite not being that big, he's got a lot of game in the paint. So it's Rubio bringing it up for Utah. They come into this one following the loss to the Grizzlies. And their defense practically non-existent in that one. Just gave up far too many easy shots. Yeah, I think they were totally checked out, Greg. At least that's what it looked like. When you play that kind of defense, you expect to lose. The shot by Powell, no good. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Exactly. Can't play it any better than that, Greg. And it's Harrison Barnes with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Mitchell left side. And Rubio kicks to Ingles. Nice ball movement by Utah. Just four to shoot. Now, here's Rubio. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Yeah, right over the top. Rubio surveying the situation. Just takes what the defense allows. Smith against Rubio. Bounce pass Smith. And here is Doncic. 23 points for him the last game against Chicago. And it was a huge night for him at the other end as well. How about the steals? And he was just a big headache the entire game. And Luka Doncic, not the top pick in the draft this past June, but one of the more exciting names out of this rookie class. Dallas made a point to trade up and draft him. Doncic not playing in the summer league as he has had a hefty workload in Europe before the draft. Two shots. Still came Two away shot. with Euro MVP honors, and at his age, that is incredible. And he knocks down the first one. And possesses such a refined feel for the game that Doncic knows he has what it takes to be a great player in this league. Both good from the line that time. And looking at Luka Doncic, incredibly mature for his age. Physically, the broad shoulders weighing in about 230. Mentally, though, advanced understanding of how to play the game. Now, here's Mitchell. He had a 30-point outing their last game against Memphis. And he passed the ball so well in that game, keeping everybody involved, even as he was racking up all those points. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Harrison Barnes picks one up. You know, Greg, it's amazing that Doncic, at his age, could already have such a complete offensive game. I mean, a terrific skill set. In Europe, Doncic spent plenty of time as a primary ball handler. Obviously, can score in a number of ways. Just a versatile threat. Matthews, he's checked in for Barnes. And Mitchell drops them both. And so here is Dallas trailing by two. Last time they met was in Utah where they beat the Jazz. In the last meeting of these two teams, they were really sharp defensively, disrupting the flow of their offense and causing a ton of turnovers. Very satisfying performance, Greg, and one they'll look to repeat tonight. I mean, they ended up winning it going away. Here's Mitchell following the basket by DeAndre Jordan. Mavericks with the rebound. Right side, Matthews. Smith outside. Back to Matthews. 
over Ingles. And he wills that one in, sinking right through off the back iron. Hey, give Matthews credit, Kevin. I mean, he has an ability to get his shot up over the defense quickly. And Gobert kicks to Mitchell. Oh, the lob to Gobert. And slam dunk by Gobert. And, and the definition of teamwork right there on that alley-oop. And, Greg, what about the finish? Bringing it down with some Impressive. thunder. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I think the pass was even better. I mean, that was room service delivery at its finest. Here is Matthews. Rudy Gobert picking up that last basket. Here's Powell. Here's Doncic. Off target from three-point range. For Utah, they've gone five of eight from the field, shooting over 62%. They get it back. Favors makes it off the glass. Favors got his first bucket in this one. And, and that's a great play on the backboard for him. I mean, it's what we expect. All his second chance points do not come by accident. And it's stolen by Ricky Rubio. Passes it to Ingles. Gobert in the corner. Shot clock at six. Rubio outside. Utah needs to get off a shot here. And it's Mitchell missing. The Mavericks trailer. Smith the pass to Jordan. And it's Jordan with the jam. Kevin can't leave anybody open around Smith. I mean, he finds him quickly. Love his court awareness. So it's Utah now. Here's Ruby. The scoring numbers have been solid for him. He's averaging just under 14 points a game. Pass to Mitchell. Puts up a three. That's in. Coming off an assist from Rubio. Mitchell's got 11 points. Defense has no answer for him. I mean, none. They look completely lost. He's been on fire. And Dallas calls their first time out of the game. And Ricky Rubio might be one of the most unselfish players in the league. And not only for his passing and how much he enjoys piling up assists, but how he does a great job adjusting to what the team needs him to do and, and not worrying about his own game. A different look for Dallas. Measury, he's checked in for Jordan. Nowitzki comes in for Dwight Powell. And Berea subbed in for Smith. Utah also making some changes. Jay Crowder's checked in for favors. Cephalosha comes in for Joe Ingles. And it's Exum in for Ricky Rubio. Now here's Matthews. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Bulls in Chicago. And for Rubio, who has been in the eye of the media for so long, Greg, he's always been unselfish. We've always seen that in his style of play. You're right, Kevin. You've always been able to see that with Rubio's game. Great at making quick reads, seeing passes before they develop. I mean, he can see who's open and who's going to be open before he even Take catches a the pass. Take a break. Two shots. Free throw, good. Matthews. And Wes Matthews, a player who has done a great job, Clark, of recovering from a ruptured Achilles. Yeah, that's a really good point, Kevin. That's not an easy injury to come back from. He had his injury in 2015 and has been one of the best examples of full recovery from what can be a devastating career-threatening injury. Reached out to DeMarcus Cousins when Cousins ruptured his Achilles to give him a voice of somebody who had already traveled that road. And the Dallas Mavericks, despite having the third worst record in the league, they had the league's highest attendance rate. Really rabid fan base there. And they also donated quite a few tickets as well to schools, charities, you name it. So that helps when you talk about filling the arena. And quite honestly, it's a good move because kids are the fans of the future. Mitchell's shot is good. Mitchell's got 13. And he's starting to show that killer instinct this quarter, looking to extend the lead. Nowitzki finds Berea. Back to Nowitzki. To the inside. It's stolen by Udo. And now Crowder running the floor all by himself. 
And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant mm -hmm. offense. Yeah, I remember G.A. as an irritant. And this guy, much like Greg, creating havoc out there. The inside just a bit too congested for him to get the usual shot he would have with rhythm. Jazz leading by five. Great offensive performance they're putting on. And guys, we call that the zone because that's where they are right now. They are in a zone, and I'm sure they feel unstoppable. Now, Udo. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Crowder kicks to Udo. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. There's something timeless about a star tandem, Clark. Uh, Jordan and Pippen, Kobe and Shaq, Steph and KD. What's needed for guys at that level to play together and coexist? I think the biggest thing is an appreciation and respect for one another. I mean, that to me is the beginning point of coexisting at a high level because you're going to have some friction. You're going to have some disagreements, but all of that can be put to the side when there's great appreciation and respect for each other and a real focus on what we're trying to get done. You get that in place, then the talent will rise to the very top. And so here is Dallas, seven-point differential. Berea kicks to Doncic. Knocks down the three ball. Doncic has got seven. And love how much Doncic believes in himself. It shows when he shoots off the pass like that. Mitchell dishes to Cephalosha. Just five to shoot. Fires from deep. Berea pulls it in. And so it's Berea with it. We'll bring it up for Dallas. Trailing by four. Doncic, no good. And that's the shot you want to create. They just can't get it to fall. That's what I call an everything but good execution. Just didn't knock it down. But you're right. They're happy with that shot. Now here's Udo. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Mitchell. And a chance now to see how teams are faring across the league. Here's the latest edition of the Power Rankings. Taking a look at Oklahoma City. They're gaining on some of the teams above them, trying hard to crack into that top five. And guys, right now for Dallas, they've had an interesting start to the year. Lately, they've put together some nice wins, and you get the general sense that their confidence is growing. Now here's Nowitzki. 14 points from him the last game against the Bulls in Chicago. And his scoring is going to get most of the attention, but... His rebounding also stood out. He did a lot of glass cleaning in that game. And that's a foul called on J.J. Barea. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. What do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for the Jazz? We've seen a lot of their points coming off penetration in the first half. Something else they've been able to do so far tonight is earn those tough points in the paint. good from Exum. On the Mavericks with some changes. Jordan comes in for Dirk Nowitzki. And Devin Harris is subbed in for Doncic. Exum hits them both. And, you know, we've seen what Rick Carlisle can do on the court. He's a former coach of the year in the league and led the Mavs to a championship back in 2011. But his off-the-court talents are also very impressive. Now here is Harris. The pass to Mejri. Takes a three. Rebounded by Cephalosha. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin particularly here to start the game. Yeah, I like the way they're setting the tone. Really playing with a lot of energy here at the start. Now here is Harris. 
after the miss from Jay Crowder. Basket counts, and it's six points for Wesley Matthews. And talking about Carlisle's outside interests, one I know of, he's an excellent pianist. And you know what? He is, and he's played with a well-known musician or two in concert. Also an avid pilot. This guy is uh, a renaissance man. Here's Cephalosha after Wesley Matthews score. Lock it two. The Jazz again can't hit it. Dallas has gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Maria looking for an opening. Back to Harris. The tray. Utah with the rebound. And stolen by Jordan. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And the foul goes against Utah. And this spot has always been Jordan's biggest drawback. Uh, he's never been able to make his free throws at, at even a modest rate. And teams are never afraid to put him on the line. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And that one misses. And DeAndre Jordan, this last offseason, opting out of his contract with the L.A. Clippers. He felt, Greg, obviously it was time to move on. It didn't take long for Jordan to find a new home here in Dallas. Had almost signed with them last time he was a free agent. Closed the deal this time around. Still has a lot to offer and a really good fit for this team inside. And DeAndre Jordan, the all-time leader in career field goal percentage, Greg, by a sizable margin. Yeah, the most prolific dunker in the league, maybe in league history. Now, here's Berea, guarded closely. Jordan kicks to Harris. Got it. Good job in the low post. And the Mavericks lead by one. Timely passing leads to assists and that's been the recipe for success everybody on the same page completely in sync tremendous communication and awareness now here's mitchell he's got 13. over harris the jazz with another miss and sometimes you know you don't capitalize off a good shot or a good look still you got to keep letting those good looks fly so at the end of one quarter of play, still a close game. Mavericks ahead, up one. And don't go away. We'll be back momentarily. During his tenure in Utah, Coach Quinn Snyder has quickly earned the appreciation of his players, including Rudy Gobert. You don't really care to have a coach like that. He really uh, takes everything, you know, uh, with heart, and he wants us to be the best defensive team in the league, as I do. And I think uh, when the coach and the players are on the same page, usually, you know, good things happen. Coach Snyder doing a terrific job with his team. Just a great tactician, and, and he's clearly got his guys buying in to his message. Some good action already in this one, but a fairly even matchup after the first quarter of play. And what do you think, guys, about Dallas here in this one? I mean, a solid first quarter, especially looking at that plus turnover ratio. Yeah, everything is sharp. I mean, nothing forced, precise passes, taking care of the ball. That's good stuff. On the floor for Utah, getting going here in the second quarter. Exum and Mitchell, the guard tandem. Jay Crowder out there with Udo, and it's Corver in at the small forward. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, the Mavericks were ecstatic when Dennis Smith Jr. fell to them with the ninth pick of the 2017 draft. For a team in need of athleticism and size at the point guard, it's been a hand-in-glove fit. The 6'3 Smith has a 48-inch vertical, one of the highest ever measured. A terrific young player, an elite NBA athlete. David, that's for sure. Good stuff. Thanks. Here's Barnes, and the dunk by Barnes. 
Nice seeing Barnes go for that dunk. Always looking to finish with power at the rim. That's how you're supposed to do it. Exum kicks to Crowder. Mitchell outside. Ring shot on the way. And the shot is long. The Mavericks leading. Harris right side. Dishes it to Barnes. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. You know, you look at Harrison Barnes, and the question when he went to the Mavericks was, can he carry the offense? Many thought he might just be a product of the Warriors system, which he left. Well, he answered all the questions, and it's clear that he can be the focal point of an offense. Gentlemen, two shots. Blue shot. First one falls for him. And for Barnes, he heard the doubters when he left in free agency. Yeah, you know, Kevin, a lot of people wondered if he could be a primary scoring option after being a complimentary piece at Golden State, and he proved that he can be. Whenever he's been doubted, he's always risen to the challenge throughout his career, even going back to college. He can score the ball in a lot of different ways, and I don't think there's any question about him being an elite scorer the rest of his career. Barnes hits them both. Clark, you had a tremendous college career, excluding yourself. Give me the best NBA player from your alma mater. Wow. I would probably lean towards Jerry Lucas as the best player coming out of Ohio State. And then you look at his pro career, it was pretty solid as well. I thought Herb Williams had a fantastic and long pro career. John Havlicek maybe would rise to the level of the best NBA player mm -hmm. of the group that came out of Ohio State. Jim Jackson is another name. Evan Turner still playing. But I think John Havlicek probably in longevity, championships, Hall of Fame, stature. I think he may be the best NBA bucket. I'm going to put Clark Kellogg in there, too. Oh! I didn't play long enough. Didn't play long enough. Here's Exum. That one misses. Smith with some nice D. Dallas leading by five. He feeds it to Jordan. Yes, and it's Smith with the assist that time. And that's now seven points for Jordan. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And on the flip side, Greg, the defenders have to show more fight on the interior. They've got to offer more resistance here. And out of bounds as Utah gains possession. Derek Favors checked in for the Jazz. Jazz trail by seven. And he can't stop the run as he misses. Pass to Harris. Shoots over Exum. That one wide left. And as he squares up for mid-range, the defender right in his face. Yeah, I like the fact, Greg, that he crowded the shooter there, made him uncomfortable, got into his airspace a bit. It looked like he forced the shot. And Gobert kicks to Exum. Jazz passing it around. Here's Favors. Good work there as it goes. Well, I tell you what, they've got to be fuming. I mean, they were way too late in contesting that layup. And here in the second quarter of action, as we approach four minutes played, Smith with it, guarded now by Rubio. Smith against Rubio, and it's Smith missing. Jazz trail by five. Exum passes to Favors, and Derek Favors with the slam. An aggressive move and fantastic finish. Mm -hmm. Trying to send a message with that slam, I think. That's exactly how you send it. Two hands and down. Now here is Harris. Kicks to Powell. Pass to Barnes. The putback. Great positioning on the putback. Yeah, Jordan is aggressive 
as a rebounder. He uses his massive body, athleticism, and long arms to wreak havoc on the glass. Rubio finds favor. Has to go bare. Now, here's Rubio. Out to Favors. Back to Rubio. Goes back up, and he sinks the layup. Rubio's got his second bucket. All right, you know, we talk about making plays. Rubio would rather not take the shot from distance, so he does the smart thing, drives it right in. Now, here is Smith. They've been leaning on him for a decent chunk of their offense. He's averaging over 15 points a game. Rubio outside. He dishes it to Favors. It's good. And now just a one-point Dallas lead. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Yeah, I think they've got to ramp up the aggressiveness, Greg. I mean, if they don't, things are just going to get worse from here. Now here's Paul. No points in the game yet for him. They grabbed their own miss. A nice shot by Jordan. Guys, his consistency in terms of shooting has really helped them seize control. And it's Exum with the ball who will bring it up for Utah. Rubio taking his time here. There's the pass to Cork. And it's Exum in the corner. The 17 footer. He clangs that one off the back iron and down it falls. Exum's got six points. The Mavericks have gone 5 of 12 from the field here in the second. Rubio against Smith. Shoots over Rubio. Buries it from about 10 feet away. Smith's got his third basket of the night. And you know, Smith says, bump that. I'm not going to let the defense overwhelm me. If he's close to the rim, he's going to find a way to score around good defense. Now here's Corver. Taking a look at his stance, he's averaging around seven and a half points a game. Rubio with it. Now Smith defending. Rubio misses. And I think all the credit goes to the defense there, Kevin. Exceptional job getting the shooter to rush that layup. He's tried to get it going, but the shots simply have not been there. Nothing seems to be falling. And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. And Corver is a fantastic scorer. Even when the D is on him, he makes these interior shots look easy with that quick release. And let's get your take, guys, on the scoring breakdown for the Mavericks. You know, guys, we've really seen them do a lot of damage in the paint so far. And also, defensively, they've been able to cause some turnovers tonight. And, and that also builds confidence and gives you momentum. One drops. He ties it up. Tell you what, you've got to get to Corver right away. This guy has unlimited range and a lightning quick release. Smith against Rubio. On the wing, Barnes. It's good, the assist that time from Smith. Smith's got three assists in the game. And guarding him on the perimeter isn't a priority for them right now, but if this continues, it will be. Got that bucket in in no time at all. Corver's got the game tied up here for Utah. Uh, okay, we got a nice little back and forth going here. Yeah, and I like it. I love seeing that. It's a lot of fun when that happens. These teams are going at each other from the outside. Now, here's Doncic. He's got seven. Nowitzki, Gobert with the block. Something that's kept this game close is the fact that the rebound stats for both teams are almost identical. The battle to a standstill on the boards has really been something to watch, and the game's not over yet. We'll see if one of these teams maintains more energy than the other going down the stretch. And Corver, a team first guy, when one of his guys is open, he wastes no time in delivering the pass. And the Mavericks call time here. And not surprising, obviously unhappy with the lack of response from his team. 
Can't blame him. I mean, the effort hasn't been there. Just has not been there. Hopefully, he can get the fire lit. And the Mavericks with some changes. Measury, he's checked in for Harrison Barnes. And Berea subbed in for Smith. And Utah also making a switch. Mitchell's checked in. Now, here's Berea. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Nowitzki up top. Over Ingles. And there's Dirk Nowitzki on the assist by Berea. Utah has gotten both of their three-point attempts to go down here in the second quarter. And you look at J.J. Barea and how he's played over the years. Has always been a spark plug for a team off the bench. It just plays with energy and creativity no matter the situation. Now here's Gobert. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Grizzlies in Memphis. And we got to talk about his four steals on the night. That's a complete performance at both ends of the floor. And with Berea and what he brings to the table, Greg, he also takes care of the ball. A lot of guards who are bench threats get, can get a little sloppy or, or careless with the ball. And Berea has been upping his assists and cutting his turnovers the last few seasons, still finding ways to be effective even after a decade in the league. Well, Rudy Gobert has taken on more of a leadership role with this team. Clearly a difference maker on the court with his defense and will get the team to fall in line. Hard to argue with one of the elite rim protectors in our league. And it's Nowitzki missing. Jazz leading by four. And there's the foul. It goes on Wesley Matthews. That'll be his second foul of the game. And that's foul number two. And maybe you don't sit him at this point, but you really have to be careful to not pick up another before half. And the Jazz making a change here. Udo's checked in. Sepalosha's shot is good. And the Jazz lead by six. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. And with Gobert, he does so much as a defender with his impact break in the paint. Yeah, and Gobert does so much in terms of cleaning up his teammates' mistakes while they're defending out there on the perimeter. It allows his teammates to be more aggressive on D, knowing he's going to be that last line of defense. And Gobert won't let them get too comfortable as he is one of the more vocal players in terms of shaping their D. You know, when I think of J.J. Barea, one of the words that comes to mind is fearless. I mean, he never hesitates to go right at big guys in the paint. Not afraid to force a tough pass through traffic. He's a very aggressive offensive player. And when you're as small as he is, sometimes that's the way you thrive. Two shots. The first one falls. With Perea, he is usually the shortest player Clark on the court, so he has no choice but to be fearless. Yeah, I agree. I mean, smaller guys typically play with an edge because it's been instilled in them from early on in their careers because everybody tends to doubt guys that don't have great size. Perea knows how to play in space and understands the value of ball movement. And when other guys try to bully him, that little hombre is pretty strong, and he pushes right back. Now, here's Rubio. He kicks it to Crowder. Hanchich with the steal. Shoots the three. Dallas with a fresh shot clock. Matthews. And the bucket is good. Three-point play chance here for him. Much respect to Matthews for his focus. I mean, you can't tie this guy down. I mean, he's excellent at scoring through contact. And, you know, Wes Matthews still a very talented player in this league. I mean, excellent presence on both ends of the floor. And he certainly has always been a solid defender on the wing. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot.
And for Matthews, he prides himself on being a two-way player. And, you know, his three-point shooting percentage might not be that impressive, but given the volume of threes he takes, pretty solid. Um, he's a terrific character guy, hardworking, always engaged. And he doesn't need to have the ball to stay involved. I mean, this guy's never going to be a star, but he's going to be one of those guys that always add value to a team. And he can play the long-range game, the mid-range game. He takes it to the rack. Doncic is a versatile three-level scorer. Matthews against Cephalosha. And the basket good by Mesri. And it's a tie ball game. And they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing the ball into the paint. And Rubio kicks to Clark. Knocks it loose. Doncic with the steal. Pass to Nowitzki. It's good. Great play set up by Perea. Perea's got four assists now tonight. Love how confident Nowitzki is from beyond the arc. I mean, he's got such a high arcing shot to go with that seven-foot frame. Almost impossible to block it. And it goes in more times than not. Now, here's Udo. Nine points last game. Crowder feeling it out a bit. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. Dirk Nowitzki picks up that. For Utah, they have been at their finest four at the free throw line tonight. Eight attempts, eight makes. Yeah, and over the course of the season, they're a respectable 78%. That comes in handy in close games. First one falls for him. They've hit every one of their free throws here in the second quarter. Very important when you're trailing. Barnes, he's checked in for Dirk Nowitzki. And both free throws good from Crowder. Twenty-four seconds left in the first half of basketball. Berea against Rubio. Not loose. And now Rubio pushing it up. No one back to stop him. And there it is for him. Rubio's got six. Yeah, he was on top of that play all the way. Great anticipation and throwing it ahead. That's how you do it. Berea, the pass to Barnes. He gets it up. And no good on the last second attempt this time. And that'll do it for the first half. A competitive game so far. Jazz lead by one. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Rick, what's your analysis of how your defense has done so far? Well, they're getting too many open looks at threes. We're lucky they're missing a few. Uh, you know, with this team, they stretch out so much, you got to be really alert. you got to pay close attention to details. Rick, thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks so much, Dave, for the great interview. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back for the second half of basketball right after this. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, hoop fans. NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. EJ, Shaq, Jet. A tremendous start for Donovan Mitchell. He had 13 points, four assists, and one rebound. And, uh, Kenny, what did you see out there from the Jazz? Well, they're putting bodies on people. If you just look at the rebounding numbers, you can tell that they've been putting their body on and being more physical than the other team. Now, that fact looms large on both sides, and that's going to be the difference in the second half. And, uh, Shaq, what did you see from Dallas? Ernie, they're taking way too many threes. The offense has no rhythm. They need to go back to the drawing board. Maybe try to get a little bit more transition, more off the pick and roll. Anything other than shooting that three. It's not going. And that'll about do it as we get ready for the second half. Let's take you down to Kevin Harlan. Shout out to my main man, Joel. Joel, what up? Cars crossing back and forth over the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge as we welcome you back to Dallas. 
And as we get into this third quarter, as we've seen so far, neither team able to create much separation on the scoreboard yet. Donovan Mitchell really making a difference here. Yeah, and sometimes you find yourself in a role you're not comfortable with, but his passing in the first half really was impressive. Yeah, and you know, he accumulated a lot of assists. And um, I liked how unselfish he was, Greg. And in that first half, we saw a pretty tight battle. We'll soon find out what sort of adjustments were discussed during the half. On the wings, it's Doncic and Barnes. DeAndre Jordan is out there with Powell. And it's Smith in at the one spot. That's the lineup in the game for Dallas. Now, here's Rubio. Just five to shoot. Puts it up. And that's collected by DeAndre Jordan. Jordan's got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Well, guys, the Jazz had to weather the loss of Gordon Hayward, so they need to play together to have success. Coach Quinn Snyder said, we expect guys to put the team in front of themselves and support each other. Our strength isn't in one guy. We need each other. Kevin? David, one thing for sure, they come to play almost every game. Thank you. A drive by Barnes. Count that one. Barnes has got 11. Boy, the size and quick release Barnes has helps him inside. I mean, he feels very comfortable shooting from here. And Rubio kicks to Mitchell. Outside favors. Passes it to Gobert. Mitchell wide open. And again, it's the Jazz from deep. Defensively, this is what you know. He's coming off a hot game and looking to keep it rolling. As well he should, Greg. I mean, he always is looking to score the ball, even more so when he's hot. I like the mindset. And here's Smith following the three-pointer by Donovan Mitchell. And, you know, by all accounts, last season was a fine debut for Dennis Smith Jr. I mean, he handled starting point guard duties from day one and was given room to learn on the job. Wasn't always easy, but this kid has talent and showed moments where you get an idea of how special he might be. And so he makes both from the line. Got to appreciate Dennis Smith now. I mean, this guy is terrific at scoring from everywhere. Very athletic and explosive. Rubio with it. Now Smith defending. And Rubio kicks to Gobert. Favors in the post. Guarded by Powell. And good that time. And that's now 10 points for Derek Favors. His hard work on the backboard really just has given them more opportunities to score. Mavericks trail by four. And for Smith last season, the goal was mostly to improve his game along with the team. Yep, exactly. And Dallas knew they wouldn't be competing for a lot and let Smith Jr. find himself, play through mistakes, learn on the fly. He improved his reads off pick and rolls and also showed improved vision as the season wore on. Guys at the point have to see the whole court at all times. One area, though, he's got to improve in is his defense and awareness on that end of the floor because the athleticism is there. If the awareness improves, this guy could be a demon on D. Just over two and a half minutes gone by here in the second half. Mitchell in the corner for the three, and again, it's the Jazz from deep. And, you know, it's obvious he's a talented scorer. I mean, that's a given. A guy you can depend on to get it done in a lot of ways. Smith with it. Guarded now by Rubio. Smith kicks to Jordan. And stolen by Favors. Barnes again tingles. Another shot. Favors can't get it to go. Mavericks trail by five. Pass to Powell. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. It's going to be on Rudy Gobert. And, you know, when Powell is this deep, Kevin, I mean, the defense knows they're in trouble. Sometimes they have no choice but to foul him. Dwight Powell, a nice player who has carved out a good role for himself on this team. You can start him if you need to, Clark, or he'll give you a spark off the bench. I think his greatest value is, though, bringing that spark off the bench. I mean, some guys are just as productive and 
limited minutes as they would be in starting minutes. So he's one of those kinds of guys. He's excellent at finishing around the rim and creating havoc with his activity at both ends of the floor. The free throw drops for Powell. The length and mobility of, of Powell is, is really impressive. He's a solid big guy who I think continues just to get better at both ends. And he makes both free throws. Mitchell with it. 19 points in the game. The dish to Gobert. Ingles against Barnes. Rubio finds Gobert. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. Rubio's got five assists tonight. Yeah, when Rubio's in there, he's looking to do one thing on the offensive end. He's kind of an Allen wrench. He wants to simply facilitate. Now here's Powell. He gives his team some nice contributions, averaging a bit over 10 points a game. Just five on the clock. And there's the pass to Smith. It's over Rubio. And that one goes long. It's tipped and stolen by Jordan. Stolen by Mitchell. Dishes it to Gobert. Rubio the pass to Gobert. Nice ball movement by Utah. Now the Mavericks moving it up. Barnes got the ball. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. What's out, man? Watch out. Man, I like seeing Barnes whip out the big time dunks, boy. I tell you, a high flying forward who knows how to throw it down. And that was an unleashed chaos replay, courtesy of Under Armour, wreaking havoc at the rim. Now, here's Rubio. He's got eight. Mitchell right side. Shoots over Doncic. Offensive rebound. And Jordan sends it back. Hey, get that weak stuff out of here. Take it home. Jordan is fantastic at rejecting those kinds of shots. Oh, Kevin, get a load of that one. Take that play and put it in the alley-oop textbook, boys. Oh, perfectly done. You're right. He put it on a platter for him. And a nice touch on the finish. Here's Gobert. Harrison Barnes picking up that last basket. Favors dishes to Mitchell. Kicks it to Ingles. Now here's Favors. Guarded by Powell. Clock at four. Here's Mitchell. But they'll get another chance. And that's a good job of just getting after it on the backboard. Gets him another possession and allows them to run even more clock. And Greg, right out of the gate, Donovan Mitchell seemed like a veteran more than a rookie. I mean, his professionalism was one of the first things Ru Ricky Rubio noticed about Mitchell. Father played minor league baseball, knows what it takes to succeed in professional sports. And you could just see it in his approach to practice and his commitment to improving his game. Mitchell was already the surprise of that 2017 draft, and I don't think there's any question he's destined to be a star. Dirk Nowitzki, he's checked in for the Mavericks. And so here is Dallas. Now, here's Doncic. He's got 12. In the corner, Smith with it. Jordan kicks to Doncic. Smith for three. Drops in the tray. Smith's got it all tied up now for the man. Yeah, I like seeing Smith catch and fire. I mean, he's really good at getting in the lane off the dribble, but when he can catch and fire, that's even better. Back to Gobert. Poke loose. On the wing, Barnes. Guarded by Korver. And there's Dirk Nowitzki on the assist by Barnes. And it's a three-point Maverick lead. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. The hustle stats for Dallas. Defensively, they played with a lot of energy, and the steals we've seen are a result of that aggressiveness. They've repeatedly gotten out on the break tonight as well and scored a lot of baskets in transition. Shot clock at six. Shot from free throw range. And good as it just snugs right down through the net. Shots are just flowing to him right now, having a really strong quarter. 
Now, here's Doncic. Not a lot of room. And the foul called on Donovan Mitchell. That's foul number two for him. Wesley Matthews checked in for the Mavericks. Jay Crowder's checked in for the Jazz. And it's the Mavericks with the ball. They lead by one. And Matthews gets it to go. Boy, I like Nowitzki's mentality. He knows he can get his shot off anytime he wants to. But he likes setting up his guys, too. It's stolen by Smith. He kicks it to Doncic. Gobert with the block. And he gets it back. Smith with a wide open look. Misses off the right iron. Jazz trail by four. Crowder from outside. That one's not going to go. And it's Barnes with the ball for the Mavericks. Inside, over Gobert, Nowitzki. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got rebound number 13 with that last one. Korver gets a wide open look. Buries the long range jumper. Korver's got nine. Yeah, I love how fast Korver shoots the ball. It doesn't even think about it. Just terrific instincts. Smith finds Nowitzki. Smith inside, covered by Rubio. Over in the corner, Matthews. And Kyle Korver picks up the foul. That'll be his second foul of the game. I, I mean, I like the call. I thought the defense was just there a little late. Yeah, it looked like it. I mean, he kind of slid underneath as he got to the spot, too. Looking at who's out there now for the Mavericks. Measury, he's checked in for Harrison Barnes. And Berea subbed in for Smith. Udo's checked in for Utah. Cephalosha comes in for Ricky Rubio. Now, here's Udo. The shot, no good. Anjic passes to Berea. Tries from 10. Oh, and that one had the right spit on it, and it is good. Hard not to commend the confidence of Berea for a point guard. He's an excellent scorer, particularly inside. Mitchell wishes to crowd it. And it's Udo atop the key. The Jazz working the ball around now. Mitchell with it. He's picked up by Doncic. Just five to shoot. Shoots from the corner. Here's Udo. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. Here's a look at the schedule now for Dallas. On Saturday, they'll be playing against Draymond Green and the Golden State Warriors. Then on Monday... They'll be matching up against Mike Conley and the Memphis Grizzlies. And if I'm this team, I'm looking at this as a barometer to see how we stack up against some of the top teams in the league. They'll have to be at their best. But if they come out of this with some success, I think it'll build momentum for the rest of the run. Both free throws good for Udo. The Mavericks have gone 8 of 14 on their shot attempts here in the third. Some pretty nice work. Berea against Mitchell. The drive by Nowitzki. Rebounded by the Jazz. Udo's got rebound number five here tonight. I wonder what the score would be if they weren't controlling the backboard. And Greg, it's clearly been their edge, and in a close game like this, you look for every edge you can find. Here's Berea following the bucket by the Jazz. On deep, another three for Dallas. And you know, Berea is a fairly consistent three-point threat. You can't sleep on him out there. Mitchell kicks to Udo, pass to Cephalosha. And here is Mitchell, defended by Mejuri. Crowder, the pass to Udo. Six to shoot. Outside Korver. And again, it's the Jazz from deep. And that's how you answer back. Exactly, Greg. I mean, go right back at him. Show him you can shoot from outside all night long. Now, here's Berea. He has seven. Stolen by Mitchell. It's two on one. Anjic with the steal. 
Got a hand on it. Outside Corver. And Utah again with the bucket. Mavericks trail by three. And here's Berea. Looking at his point production, he averages almost 11 points a game. They get a hand on it. Stolen by Mitchell. Back to Crowder. 58 seconds left to play in the third. It's stolen by Berea. Matthews with it. Now defended by Mitchell. And the dunk by Doncic. Uh, has the vertical needed to dunk it. Doncic showing off the power and flair that he possesses. Mitchell kicks to Udo. Corver passes to Cephalosha. There's 37 seconds left here in the third quarter. Down to five on the shot clock. Fires the three. And the rebound goes to the Mavericks. Mejri's got his fifth rebound in this one. Passes to Doncic. Berea finds Nowitzki. Shoots over Crowder. Nowitzki's shot is no good. Boy, he's having a tough time right now. Seems like he's forcing his shot a bit to me, Kevin. Not letting it come in the flow of the game. The three. Another three for Dallas. You know, he's always ready to shoot the basketball, Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, as soon as he catches the pass, he's locked and loaded and ready to go. Great confidence in his stroke. Three quarters of play in a close game here. The Mavericks on top, leading by just two. And after a quick break, we're going to come right back with the start of the fourth quarter. Rick Carlisle had some words for his team. Let's hear what he had to say. And look, you can score, but we're getting seduced into a shot trade with these guys. We don't want to do that, all right? And you know, both teams are clicking right now, Greg, but Coach Carlisle, you heard right there, knows that defense will be crucial if they want to win this game. Spot on, Kevin. If they can get a few stops, I think they're going to be in really good shape. Well, what a terrific game it's been so far with this fourth quarter sure to bring more pressure-packed basketball. All right now, a chance to set the floor courtesy of Gatorade. Fourth quarter action, all fueled up and ready to go. So on the floor for Utah. Mitchell is out there with Jay Crow. Then it's Joe Ingles. Then there's Udo. And it's Cephalosha in at the small forward position. Udo gets the bucket. Udo's got it all tied up now for the Jams. And you don't want to allow too many of those short ones with the game right now in the balance. Berea kicks to Powell. Knocks it loose. And so the Mavericks with another turnover. That's a two from Cephalosha. Nice spin off the left rim and in. And the Jazz lead by two. All right, well, look at how the hustle game has been going for the Jazz. Boy, they're hounding, harassing effort at the defensive end. Very impressive. And they forced quite a few turnovers as a result. And, and also, how about the points they've gotten in transition or on the fast break tonight? That's been a huge factor as well. And if they continue, Kevin, their outstanding free throw shooting, that'll help them seal the deal. Yeah, they've not missed a single foul shot this half. That's taking care of business, fellas. Dallas making a switch here. Jordan's checked in. Cephalosha hits both of them. Here is Berea. Outside Matthews. Pass to Doncic. That one falls through. It's his sixth make from the floor this game. Now six for ten. And it just seems when Doncic turns it on, it's a sight to see. Incredible at scoring in a variety of ways. Now here is Cephalosha. Five to shoot. That's tipped. 
from deep three-point range, and they force the shot clock violation. Great team. And, and you can tolerate gaffes like that sometimes, but in a close game, man, I tell you what, that really hurts. Here's what Utah's going with right now. Favors comes in for Utah. And Ricky Rubio is subbed in for Crowder. The Mavericks trailing. Now Berea. Here's Doncic. It's good. Great play set up by Berea. Berea's got assist number five here tonight. And when you want Doncic, he's one of those guys who kind of just slithers around until he finds an opening and then bam. Now here is Cephalosha. Rubio dishes to Favors. Cephalosha against Matthews. Let's go. The Jazz with another miss. The Mavericks have gone two or three from the field to get the fourth quarter start. And the dunk by Powell. And, you know, this is what Powell does best. Establishes himself deep inside and jams it home. Utah's gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. Rubio outside. Here's Favors. And that one, good. And just great offensive execution by both sides, leaving nothing on the table. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Greg, both of these teams completely aligned in sync right now. I mean, they are torching the net late in this ball game. Harrison Barnes, he's checked in for the Mavericks. Dennis Smith comes in for J.J. Barea. And a switcher also for Utah. Gobert, he's checked in for Tabo Cephalosha. Now here's Powell. A bit under three and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth. Smith, the pass to Jordan. And that one drops. And they've had assists now in their last three baskets. And it's Rubio with the ball for the Utah Jams. After this one, they're off to Philadelphia to take on the 76ers. And that game will be game three of five away from home. And Doncic gets it to go. And he's capable of scoring from anywhere, really. Doncic has a strong grasp here of the mid-range. Jazz trail by four. Rubio with it. Feeds to Gobert. And slam dunk by Gobert. And right there, Rubio doing what he does. Seeing the floor, exploring the defense, finding the open man, and getting him the ball. Now, here's Doncic. Barnes outside. And the pass to Jordan. It's stolen by Ingles. No one near him. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Ingles has got the game tied up here for Utah. Now, here's Doncic, covered by Mitchell. Poked away, and that's out of bounds. Dallas will retain possession. A three from Barnes. One made three for him for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. Pass to Mitchell. Shoots over Doncic. And it's Mitchell missing. The Mavericks have gone five of seven from the field since the beginning of the fourth. Strong work at that end of the floor. And the dunk by Powell. And guys, right now, the defense mentally not there. Can't afford too many of those in a close game like this. Yeah, Jay, you're right. Almost a free run for him there. Momentum can swing on plays like that, Kevin, especially when the finish has that much thunder on it. And so it's Utah here with the ball, following the score by Dallas. Mitchell right side. Shot clock at five. Over Smith. And the shot falls short this time. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. Now, here's Rubio. After Luka Doncic's miss, wasted no time on that one. Well, you know, one thing you notice about Rubio's jumper, the slow release takes him a while to get into it. Something that's not so easy to just get up and change. Going to take a lot of work 
to remake that release. Dallas calls timeout. And Kevin, he saw his, his guys just a little sluggish out there. Oftentimes, a timeout like this allows you to kind of just reset. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin, I heard Rick Carlisle during that last break talking with the team. This is still a close game, and he told us, guys, we're not far away. We can still get this one. If we seize the moment, we can walk away with the win, guys. He dishes it to Mitchell. Tipped away. And it's out of bounds. The Jazz able to retain possession here. Rocket six. The wide open look here for Ingle. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. Oh, he had him spinning. He looks like he's dizzy after that crossover. Barnes kicks to Doncic. Got a piece of it. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Luka Doncic. That is his first foul of the game. The Jazz have gone 7 of 11 from the floor in the final quarter so far. Been some solid looks for them. Smith against Rubio. Gobert dishes to Mitchell. Over Doncic. Misses off the left iron. For Dallas, they've gone six of nine on their field goal attempt since the start of the fourth quarter. And the dunk by Powell. And how about the vision there from Doncic? Can make the easy pass and also the difficult one. Utah's gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. Rubio against Smith. Mitchell passes to Gobert. And there's the call on DeAndre Jordan. That's his first foul. On defense, the Mavericks. Mitchell kicks to Rubio. Ingles passes to Gobert. Shot clock at six. Unloads. I like seeing Smith use his good speed and quick hands to bother shooters. And it's always good to see young players getting after it on the defensive end. They get a hand on it. And again, Dallas turns it over. And now a look at the upcoming schedule for the Utah Jazz. On Friday, they'll be facing Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. And then on Saturday, they'll be matching up with Al Horford and the Boston Celtics. And when you look at the Kings matchup, it's going to be a battle for this group. You get the feeling they'll need to be at their sharpest if they want to come away with a victory. And that one falls for Ricky Rubio. And, you know, the thing about Rubio, Kevin, he's such an accurate foul shooter. That hasn't translated, though, to his shooting from the field. Tabo Cephalosha has checked in for the Jazz. Smith surveying the D. The feed to Barnes. Kicks it to Doncic. Back to Barnes. Pass to Smith. Some nice passing here by Dallas. To take the lead. Gets it to drop, and now he's shooting at a 5-for-8 clip. Well, Smith is both a volume and efficient three-point scorer. I mean, he shoots a lot of them, but he makes a good percentage of them, too. Now, here's Rubio. Pass to Favors. Shoots over Powell. It's hauled in by DeAndre Jordan. Mavericks have gone 8-of-11 from the field in the final period. Great shooting down the stretch. And stolen by Cephalosha. Mitchell outside. Back to Cephalosha. Mitchell outside. Favors with the ball. Powell's there. Here's Gobert. Great D that time from Jordan. 
Dallas has gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Doncic kicks to Smith. Pass break. Here come the Jazz. Here's Mitchell. And it's Mitchell with the jam. Boy, right down to the wire here. Still anyone's ball game. Yeah, and after all the energy both sides have expended, both teams still hungry for the lead. Now, here is Smith. Doncic with it. Now defended by Mitchell. Smith for three. Fresh 24 for the Mavericks. Utah leading. Mitchell left side. High post, Gobert. Cephalosia kicks to Gobert. The pass to Fabers. It doesn't go for him. Good D by Barnes. The Mavericks shooting an efficient 53% from the field. Here's Smith. And DeAndre Jordan throws it down. Hey, you know, Kevin, there's a reason why Jordan's a high percentage shooter. Shooting percentage, a function of the kind of shots you get, he opts mainly for dunks. And here is Mitchell. One thirty-one left in the fourth quarter. Here's Rubio. Busts the J after the KG pass me. And the Jazz lead by one. And big props, major props to Rubio. Being aggressive, making plays with the game heating up. That's what you want your point guard to do. Make it happen. Whistle blows. But that's going to be a travel. Joe Ingles, he's checked in for Tabo Cephalosha. Utah has gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. Kicks it out to Rubio. Has to go bare. Here's Ingles. From 13. That misses off the backboard. And it's Smith with the ball. He brings it up for the Mavericks. Passes to Barnes. Ingles with the rebound. That's what we're talking about in terms of the activity level defensively. You got to protect the rim. Mm -hmm. Textbook defense all around. Nice job at contesting the shot without fouling. And that's how you do it. Well done. Here is Favors. 35 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Now, that is cold-blooded. Indeed it is. Love seeing them deliver when they need him most. No fear taking these shots. I love it. Now, here's Doncic. Here's Barnes. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul. Shot misses. He'll be shooting two. And there's the call. Utah the foul. So the first one drops, and that brings them within two here. And you got to appreciate the overall game of Barnes. He's efficient as a scorer and also works hard at the defensive end. And he cannot convert on the second. That misses. And now they foul and stop the clock. Yeah, you, you can't let him hold the ball and just milk those last seconds away. No, you got a foul. I mean, it's going to come down to free throws here. Foul right away. That's good. Going one or two from the line, and that makes it a three-point lead. And the Mavericks call time here. They're behind by three. There's 21 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. presentation of our Jordan player of the game Donovan Mitchell and, and I just love how assertive he's been at the offensive end tonight that, that's really come across in his passing he's been decisive knowing just where to go with the ball and, and making some great feeds the D hasn't been able to figure out what to do against this guy There's 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 
you got to give Smith a bunch of credit. I mean, he didn't get nervous, was remarkably calm in an important moment. And Quinn Snyder wants a timeout. There's 18 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Mitchell outside. No good. You had a foul to give there, but you'd rather not have it cost your team points. I agree. I mean, you would have been better off using it on the floor and not on the shot. But the foul had to come either way, so it is what it is. Second one is good. We both at the line, and it's a two-point ball game. Well, that's just clutch work, really. That's all you can say. A little bit of D now, and they'll be out of here with the win. Dallas calls timeout. They trail by two. Just two seconds left here in the fourth quarter. For three, Smith. And so it's Utah who's scraped by with a win. They break the hearts of every fan in the building with a dramatic late victory. And, Kevin, this is the kind of win you have to take a ton of pride in. I mean, they battled with everything they had and came through when the pressure was at its highest. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. With Dante Exum. Dante, still a young guy in this league. What do you want to focus on with your development? Um, you know, I think it's just staying in the defensive end. You know, sometimes in the heat of the play, you kind of lose sight of it. And it's just about staying in there and just helping your teammates out. So, A very young guy on a very good team. Thank you, Dante. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, thank you. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time.